Hey everybody, sorry I haven't posted a video in a long time. Uh, I have a lot of things happened in my life really quickly. One, I had to get my own health care because I turned 26, and that meant I had to go to a lot of doctor visits before my old health care expired. Second thing, my dad uh, went to the hospital. He's fine. It was a false alarm, but it was really scary. I had to do a lot of chauffeuring, and so that took up a bunch of my time. So, yeah, I actually haven't played Gwent in a week, and it's going to really show in my gameplay, and I'm going to explain what I should have done instead of the mistakes I made. So without further ado, let's talk about the next new deck. This is called Full Movement. The only card that you probably notice that isn't in here is Milana, or the card that moves a card every turn to the row that it's on. I just, I couldn't really justify putting her even in a full movement deck because she doesn't produce enough value for being a four strength card. Now, the other thing that I want to point out, everything else is pretty consistent with what I've already been playing for a while, but I made a combo between the trappers and the smugglers. The trapper puts a unit on your opponent's board and that buffs up the smuggler. So does Yaven. Yaven buffs up the smuggler and this, these kind of strategies work well together. Another combo that's unique to this deck is between Ivareth and Ard. Ard will do four, uh, two damage and Ivareth will do an extra two damage because those cards moved. I think Ivareth would be a lot better if he also buffed up your own units, but as it stands now, he only damages your opponent units when you move them. And there isn't very many times when I want to move my opponent's units except with Ard and occasionally with Zoltan. So. Without further ado, we're going to go into a game. My first game's against another Enya. I already have a clear idea what I think the Enya play is going to be playing because when the meta snapshot comes out, people already know what kind of decks they're playing. You might also notice that I am playing with a keyboard and mouse. That's because my controller is broken. I really do not know how you guys play with a keyboard and mouse. It is so clunky and horrible. Yeah, I know exactly what deck I'm up against. It's like, uh, it's that person who won that tournament. He got a uh, points for that. Um, he, he, he made this kind of control Enya deck. It has lots and lots of scorches. I completely forgot about the scorches later. I'm right now. I'm just focusing on how do I use a keyboard and mouse again for this game. Uh, you might have noticed I put the officer and I moved his unit with it. That's because I'm thinking of lacerating instead of getting the points from the Blue Mountain Commando. Or with the uh, Trappers. So I'm going to use the Trappers right now to get some value. Usually you would wait a little longer to do this, but meh. I'm getting a lot of value out of these Trappers right now. Movement does pretty well against this, but here you see I made a big mistake. I put myself into Scorch range. And I could have avoided that had I waited a little longer. But I'm not really all that perturbed. I'm still ahead, it's just not as ahead as I would have been. Now here I'm trying to debate whether or not to use my leader ability or the Dwarven Mercenary. I go with the Dwarven Mercenary. I decide to move a unit on that row just because it's going to be two points either way, and I'd rather have less points on the board for my opponent's inevitable brand play. Here, I make a mistake again. Um, I decide to push the me uh, melee row when I could have just pushed the range row and put them all in one row and lacerated that. That would have been more points. And I kind of regret it now. Yeah. I decide not to go for the last rate because I thought I wanted more deck thinning here and that was ended up being fine. So going to the next round, I won. Despite getting scorched and getting my opponent getting a huge bran off. They couldn't really play the brand and the scorch together because they kind of have anti-synergy. I'm actually happy I drew my other Dwarven Mercenary here. I, it's the only other Dwarf in the deck that I can pull with Barkley Elves. Here I'm going to make a few mistakes, uh, so pardon me for that. So I open up with Barkley Elves, which is fine. 
I want to see if I have anything I can hit with the uh, uh, Kirin. Here, I should have played the Kirin instead of the Zoltan, because I already know that my Yavin's going to die to the Scorch. Here, I'm kind of moving this into that row, just in case he has an Igni. He doesn't, because I already know he has a Siri Dash, and I win by four points. It was a really close game. I made a bunch of mistakes, but it didn't matter against that deck. My deck's flexible enough to handle it. Now we're going into the next game, seamlessly. Uh, we're up against one of those Aridin decks everybody knows about. My deck has kind of benefits against the weather decks because I have weather removal. I think I'd do a lot better in this game. So he has a lot of tokens. He's also going to have a lot of weather. I'm going to remove his weather with the uh, officer. I move his uh, uh, elemental or uh, his golem out of that because they're not going to be able to damage it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I don't clear the weather yet because I'm fairly certain that my unit's going to survive and because I want to clear two weathers simultaneously, two birds with one stone. Is the fact that since he's putting up so many units, he's buffing up my smuggler a ton. And because my smuggler got damaged by the weather, it's not as big as it could have been. Uh, which would have been dangerous against the Becker's Twisted Mirror. Becker's Twisted Mirror is one of the strongest guards in the game. I'm actually upset that I put the uh, trap into the melee row, but it didn't end up mattering because he had the Savage Bear, allowing me to use the Shrooms to get rid of that. Uh, his hyper buff unit that he got from the Becker's Twisted Mirror. Okay, I win round one quite decisively. Um, I have the advantage in round one because I have all these spells that are stronger in round one they are, than they are in the later rounds. So I'm going to just... I push out the Kirin and that might have been a mistake, who knows. Okay. I luckily get Yaven. Yaven would have been fine even in the final round because like Yaven doesn't count as many points for them because I'm going to do control effects that hit the entire row. Now I made a mistake. I pushed out the Trapper. If I had not pushed out the Trapper, this round would have been so much easier. <laughs> I promise. It would have been the easiest round you've ever seen had I uh, not had Saskia in my hand. But I thought it was a fairly safe risk due to the fact that I have so many cards in... I have a lot of cards that I could have gotten other than Saskia. So now I'm setting up for an Ard. I was thinking that I would rather Ard the Range Row, but I wasn't sure what, uh, I wasn't expecting the Water Hag. So I, I don't want to play my Control card until later. So I Lacerate. Now I have a, you would, if I Lacerate, I tie. However, there is a chance for me to win this game. I want you guys to think you can guess how I win this game. I can't use the marching orders, and I can't use the last raid if I want to win. The only way to win is with Trapper. I got it. Good. No matter what you people say, I'm gonna do my thing my way. No matter what you I'm gonna do my thing much better than you No matter what you say or do Oh boy, you're out of luck It's gonna roll right off of me Like water off the back of a dump